Hey everybody, little Scotty here. We're going to talk about pulmonary stenosis, which I should have covered earlier. I don't know why I missed it, but uh, we'll cover it now. And I want to show you some of the images and what happens during pulmonary stenosis. Now mainly, we're going to cover valvular stenosis, so we're going to be looking directly at the valve. Um, there, are, I have a few photos of uh, different kinds of stenosis, but you can have uh, a child can be born with uh, uh, sub pulmonic stenosis, which is where the uh, valve, it's not the valve that's stenotic, it's usually some tissue down here below the valve. You can see the black here if you can, that is making the flow that's going through the pulmonary. Uh, artery um, obviously very fast and and there's a definitely a gradient there because of the stenosis in that area and you can also have supravalvular stenosis which is where the blockage is up here somewhere okay so um, that may be something that uh, let me just make a little hole there um, so, either way, you can see the stenosis is, is uh, most common in the valve, though. So, I did want to point those two out to you so you know. Now, if you have stenosis anywhere, um, pretty much, you are going to have, um, definitely have, some thickening of the right ventricle. So... In, I'm sorry, if you have pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary valvular stenosis, pulmonary stenosis, subpulmonary stenosis, pulmonary valve stenosis, suprapulmonary stenosis, the RV is going to get thick, okay, because it's like a muscle, like anything else, and if you're making it work harder, it's going to get thicker. It's just like if you're doing, you know, curls to make your biceps look bigger, um, when you put strain on those biceps, they get thickened or larger, and you're putting strain on the right ventricle by a narrowed valve. So it will get thicker. It'll get thicker first, and then it'll eventually dilate. And when it dilates, then the right ventricle is starting to fail, and that's a bad thing because then the child will have real problems breathing. Now, the good thing is this is very fixable now, so um, we'll get on to some more things. Here's just another view of the heart, and you can see what I was talking about there with the uh, thickened pulmonary valve um, and how it will cause the RV here to get thicker. So, showing you that right here. And uh, the narrowed valve can be because the valve is thickened or maybe it's deformed in some way. But the, the valve definitely does not work properly, and uh, you can have a lot of uh, pulmonary insufficiency, too, along with the stenosis. Um, the worse the stenosis is, though, the less usually the less um, pulmonary regurge there is, because the valve just won't let any flow go back because it's so narrowed. So, anyhow, this is showing that. I just wanted to show you one more picture of it. As usual, anytime you have something that's drawn up by Mayo Clinic, it's uh, usually pretty accurate and very well done. So, another view of the valve, and you can see again it's showing a thickened valve and a thickened RV. So these are the things you're going to look for if you're doing an echo on a baby. If you see the, the right ventricle is thicker than normal. Now remember, in a child, the right ventricle is always a little bit thicker than you'd normally see. That's just because it's been, you know, doing some work during in vitro. Um, it's been doing most of the work, actually. So um, the valve itself, though, should open and close very well. And then the thickness in the RV will go away. But if the valve is thick, like this one is showing... Um, and obviously you're going to retain that LVA or RVH. So um, again, a good drawing of it, and 
putting it out there for you. Now I'm going to show you some echo images because I don't think this has got to be a long, a long seminar here. Okay, so here's an echo image. Now this would be a standard uh, image like you would use for an adult. In a, a pediatric view, it would be flipped upside down um, in some cases. In other cases, we just leave it as the adult view because most peds cardiologists are okay with this view. So you can see that there's very, very turbulent flow here in the pulmonary area. So it looks like the valve is somewhere around here, but I can't tell for sure because there's so much turbulence there. And uh, marking the velocity right here, they're getting pressure gradient maximum pressure gradient of 113. That means the difference between the pressure here and here is 113 um, millimeters of mercury, which is very significant. This is a huge gradient. Um, they don't list the mean gradient here, but a lot of times the docs want to know what the mean gradient is. Um, I could probably calculate that for you, but I'm a little bit short on time here, so um, the Vmax, or the velocity max, is 532, and that's what's producing that huge gradient. So you would put your cursor through here, like that. Continuous wave, obviously, because that's what you're going to need to pick up a velocity this high. So always sample with continuous wave when you think you see pulmonary stenosis. This is where the color flow comes in so handy. You know, back in the early 1800s when I started doing echo, um, there was no way to uh, um, actually move the continuous wave probe. You had to move the image into the continuous wave. So it was very difficult at times to actually get a gradient. So, um, and we didn't have color flow Doppler, so we were looking at the screen and just assuming that that valve was stenosed by the way it looked in the 2D image. Now we got color Doppler and that helps immensely. Okay, remember I talked about some of the different uh, stenosis that come along with the pulmonary artery. Um, this is supravalvular membrane which will cause stenosis too. Um, you can see it right here. Here's the membrane that's going across. The valve is actually up here. So the flow through the valve will be okay. When it hits this membrane it's going to increase in velocity quite a bit because that looks like a pretty tight membrane. So distinguishing whether it's the valve or not is very important. Um, you can have sub and supra. So sub is below the valve and supra is above the valve. So um, distinguishing that if you see a valve that's opening well but you see turbulent color flow then you know zoom in and look and see if you see a membrane there somewhere or maybe a blockage that looks like kind of a extra piece of tissue that's grown maybe above the valve um, in the 2D image and you kind of need to sample there too and then let the docs figure out you know where this is um, you can also use your pulsed wave Doppler, which is very important for this, and sample all the way along this area and see where the jump up in uh, velocity is. You know, you may have one, one meter, sorry, one meter here, and here it's, you know, 1.2. God, I hate this. And uh, down here, all of a sudden, you know, you look and it's 4.2. So obviously the membrane is the problem. And then, you know, when you go when you go to sample here, it might even be higher right here. It might be 4.8 or something like that, something ridiculous. So that's when the pulse wave comes in handy. Obviously the flow is going to alias here really bad, but at least you can show them the jump up and where it is. Okay, here's a view, um, an echo view that's 
a pediatric view, so you can see how it's upside down. Okay, pulmonary artery is right here, and uh, they're sampling with a continuous wave probe, and uh, they're not getting a very, or they're getting a very high velocity of. If you look at it, let me see where they measured it. Five seventy-eight. Oh, sorry, that's my, that's my phone. I love Uptown Funk by uh, Bruno Mars. Um, so, sorry about that. But anyhow, um, this is a high-velocity jet, obviously, at 5.78. That's ridiculous. That's, that's a huge gradient. So, um, you'd obviously need to address this quickly. All right, just want to show you this image real quick. This is if you were looking at a normal valve, straight on. So this would obviously be the normal valve. And you can see, obviously, the wide opening here. And this is a thickened valve, or a stenotic valve. And you can see how the leaflets are just very thick. And they will not open very well, so you might have an opening this big. And... You know, if you calculate it, you can actually trace the opening here and get a, um, a valve area that way if you want. That's actually considered to be the gold standard for the mitral valve. It's been a while. I'm not sure if that applies to the pulmonary valve, but it would never hurt to trace the opening. So zoom in on it. Try to catch it. You know, freeze it. Walk it back until you see the valve open, and then just trace the opening, and that will give a valve area too. So, um, in uh, centimeters squared, so never hurts to try a little extra things to help the doc out. Um, they usually appreciate it if they pay attention to that kind of thing. So, anyhow, I'm going to show you one more thing, and we'll be done. Okay, so I wanted to show you how they fix. Um, pulmonary stenosis now. Um, it's relatively similar to a coronary artery um, stent placement. So um, you can see here there's a balloon that has been brought in by a catheter and that balloon is inflated and then uh, that kind of cracks the uh, stenotic valve open um, and uh, you have an open valve. Problem is with this is you also will end up with a lot of uh, pulmonary insufficiency. That's usually what happens. Um, now, from what I've heard, they are deploying uh, stents for the pulmonary artery that actually have a valve in them. So what they do is they pin back the valve um, let me erase this so I can start over. They pin back the valve to the side wall of the um, uh, to the side wall of the actual pulmonary artery. So they pin it back, and a new valve goes in, maybe a little higher or something of that nature. Um, so maybe the valve will be up here and uh, it will open and close very well but it's a prosthetic valve it's usually a tissue valve so because they're doing this on a little kid obviously or a baby or whatever they may be doing it on but these new stents that have valves in them are very good also for elderly patients who have aortic stenosis they will use them because they may not survive an open heart surgery so may buy them you know three or four or five more years of life if they uh, put that uh, stent in with a valve in. So anyhow, that kind of covers uh, pulmonary stenosis and what's done with it um, to try to repair it. I hope it was helpful, and I hope you guys have a great day.